Hello everybody, welcome to the Tiger's Den, and welcome to this video where we're going to talk about microtransactions. Because EA, EA said the other day that they will be bringing back uh, microtransactions to Battlefront 2. Now this shouldn't really be a huge surprise. They did say it was temporary removal um, until they could figure out a model that they were um, that they were okay with. And the thing about microtransactions for me is that I'm not against it. It's a way uh, for a developer to keep earning money, but also have enough money to keep hey, developing new out. free stuff in the form of content that doesn't split the community. I'm going to show you a few different models that I like and why I like them. Uh, firstly, I'd like to say that... Uh, paid DLCs like the access to underground or the access to to a lot of the different stuff that's going on here in the division. Whereas I see why they did that, I don't feel that is good enough. There are a lot of places that that make you pay for map packs and and stuff that that should be free, should be part of the base game. How I'd rather like you to do this is the way the Division has done it with these things. These are things that you get uh, through accommodations. Accommodations are, well, they're like, they're like achievements. You do a certain thing, you get accommodation points, or you get cyber fragments. These fragments can be used to unlock these caches. In these caches, you can get all of these things. You can get emotes, you can get weapon skins, you can uh, get weird hats, like this uh, crew hat brown. Ah, what? Okay. This wool cap, uh, pork pie hat, you name it. You can get all these things in these caches. And it's all earned through in-game credits. You can get this in-game. You don't have to buy it, but you can buy it if you want to. Uh, and, and that I don't mind. That means there is a possibility of you to grind your way towards it and actually get it. What I don't like about this model, however, is the same thing I don't like about a lot of the others. The fact that they are loot boxes you you have to keep on grinding and there's a possibility of um, of getting duplicates now you are rewarded some key fragments if uh, if it is a duplicate and when you get 10 fragments that turns into one key but I really feel that instead of that, you should be able to grind and grind and grind, uh, and and then be able to just go and pick up. Right? Okay, I really want, I really want the honeycomb ash skin for my backpack. I I'll go pick that up. Or I'm Swedish, so this looks like the Swedish flag, so I'm, I want to pick that up. That's what I would like to see. Directly purchasing the skins you want, and the rarer they are the higher the cost they could be. Uh, because, let's face it, if it's one item that you really like, like for me, for me, I, I really love this hat, and I've been wanting it since the first time I saw it, that could have been enough incentive for me to actually go buy the credit to buy it. If, if it was at a reasonable price, it doesn't give me any sort of uh, of combat bonus. It doesn't give me any sort of upper hand against others. And that's that's one way I'd like to see it. As long as you're able to grind it endgame and get it that way, sure, I'm aboard. Let's go look at a different model of um, uh, of uh, microtransactions. And this, this is World of Warships.
This is a different model of microtransactions that I can get behind. Granted, in the early days, what uh, microtransactions would give you in World of Tanks was it would give you gold ammo. Or one of the things you could get was gold ammo. And with gold ammo, you would get more penetration, you would get more, uh, more damage, and so on. But they changed that around and made it so that you can buy it with normal in-game credits. Now, the way I like, uh, like for, for example, the, the way Wargaming are doing it, the way I like it here, is because you're not getting a combat bonus, you're not getting any sort of upper hand against your other enemies. The only thing you're getting is more credits, allowing you to buy ships, modules, and so on, and XP. Both of these you need all the way through your... Uh, your game so it's not splitting the community in any way uh, it's it, it's not giving you any sort of bonus or any sort of thing that you can't get with just playing the game normally um, and they've also added certain premium boats Premium boats work in the same way that a premium account does. It gives you more XP and money than the others. Uh, and fair enough, they might have certain certain elements to them that their counterparts don't have. For instance, the Missouri, which I have, as opposed to the Iowa. The Missouri has radar, which allows them to see through smoke. The Iowa doesn't. But radar isn't a special thing. It's actually a lot of other ships that has a longer uh, duration on their radar. So it doesn't give me an upper hand as such. It just allows me to play it differently and makes it different. Makes it worthwhile actually going for these ships. And, and some might argue that that getting the XP and getting the money splits the community down like no it doesn't it doesn't at all split the community in any way shape or form the only thing it does is allow you to level up faster so you might even go ahead and say that because of this because of the premium time you're leveling up quicker and not learning as much. Could be. Who knows. Um, there could be a sad truth to that. Uh, I certainly feel like that. A lot of times when I derp out. And I I, I go. I, I just completely wreck myself in a high tier game. Because I did something stupid. Maybe I wouldn't have done that. If I just played this without uh, a premium account. Where I don't like what Wargaming have done is that when you play... Let, let's go look at my, uh, my Yamato. There we go. When you play Tier 10, or anything from 8 and above, without a premium account, there is a huge chance that you're going to lose a lot of credits because of the in-game mechanics of this. They, they've they designed it to to be a credit sink, and, and I can understand it, but... But you're forcing your players to play Tier 8 when they'd rather just play Tier 10. Now, granted, what that does is that it keeps ships in rotation, so it's good, but at the same time, I'm not a huge fan of it. And there are a lot of companies picking up on this way of doing it, but uh, a, a game I used to play a lot has most likely the best uh, way of doing things 
in my opinion. Dota 2 has skins that drop. You don't have to pay for them. You can put them on the Steam market. And, and, and granted, that will give you money. But that's the Steam market. And that regulates itself. Uh, for instance, the, the most common item in the game could drop, but if nobody puts it out there, that could sell for a lot of money. But, you know, people are going to put it on the market. But <laughs> And then there, are, then there are games that have made a sort of a halfway between these, and that is CSGO, uh, PUBG, both of them have chosen a midway sort of model from from Dota to to the others because you have the boxes which you need to purchase the keys to open well some of them in PUBG but all of them in uh, in CS:GO and it's slightly gambling you know you're getting something. You know you're getting an actual or an item you can do something with, and and sell. But you're not guaranteed to get an item that is worth more than two fifty. But that again is because of the way the market regulates itself. So there there are a lot of things out there that can be said and done about. Uh, a, loot boxes and so on but but my suggestion is easy remove the loot boxes make skins purchasable directly like for instance this this the skin i have on the amato well what they've done well not this uh, this exact one but what they have done is that they've given me a skin that is readily available in all uh, to have all the the folks in the game I can purchase it it gives me a certain bonus but I can also grind in game to get flags or, or skins that does the same thing for me So they're not splitting the community. They're not doing anything radical here. But this, if I were to purchase this, it would also um, reapply itself for free. But then again, I'd have to spend actual money to get the in-game credit that is called doubloons in this game instead of gold, which is World of Tanks. Now, granted, that does give me a certain bonus, but that bonus is also available for everybody else through the natural means in the game. So, microtransactions. A good tool that has been misused for quite a while. If... Uh, if my tip was to be picked up by somebody in, in the development community for games, it is this. Never split your community. Always have the possibility to grind the, uh, the in-game purchasables, uh, purchasables in some way, shape, or form. Uh, but never, never give anyone a bonus or uh, an upper hand because they've spent money. That, that should never be done. And I'm looking at you, EA. <sighs> so that, those were my two cents about games and 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 uh, you know the the premium and, and microtransactions what do you guys think should 
should we instead usher in an era where where everybody goes for a fully developed game you pay the whole hundred bucks for it or whatever and then you just you get one complete package or or should we allow uh, a, a lower price just to be able to enable um, more people to get the game but also then allowing for microtransactions what do you guys think I'd like to hear your opinion leave a comment down below but as always keep wild stay free and I'll see you guys in the next book